Well, welcome to the 2020 Argos State of the Union as part of Great Cup Unite. I'm Mike Hogan, the communications manager for the Argos, and we'd all rather be in Regina right now competing for a Great Cup. That, that was the goal. Obviously, we're not able to do that. So uh, instead, we'll try and do the best, uh, the next best thing that we can do, and that's get everybody together for a State of the Union. And we have really the three main players in the Argos organization joining us. So uh, while I don't think anybody needs an introduction, let me do it anyway. Uh, we'll start out with the president of the Toronto Argonauts, Bill Manning, also of TFC, who's uh, in mid-season or getting toward the end of the season right now. Bill, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Happy also to be here. The general manager of the uh, Toronto Argonauts. Again, needs no introduction, but Hall of Fame player, several great cups, although he's greedy, he wants more. This time as a general manager of the team, Mike Clemens. Pinball, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, I, I want to do a big thanks to, to Bill as well. He's been a tremendous help and a tremendous asset for our organization. So big old hug right there. Uh, give, me, give, me, give me that hug, <laughs> Pinball. Uh. There we go. And the uh, the head coach, uh, who we have yet to see, wear double blue on the sideline. Uh, we are anxiously awaiting to see that. But uh, Ryan Dinwiddie, uh, all settled up here in the in the West End of Toronto in Oakville, I believe. Ryan, welcome to the uh, welcome to the State of the Union. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. And looking forward to twenty twenty one. Be as patient we can be, but we'll put out a good product next year. Absolutely. Um, obviously, we'd rather be competing for this, and we'll 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 talk about uh, the football ops side of things in a bit. But first of all, I want to ask you how you're all doing through this. For, for a lot of people, 2020 has been a, a, a disastrous season. Forget the CFL and the Argos, but just from a from a personal standpoint, Bill, I'll start with you. How are, how are you coping through the last eight or nine months? Look as best we can. Um, you know, I. Uh... I, I try to control what I can control and um, on things we can't control, we hope for the best and we try to make the, the right decisions both on a personal level and a, and a professional level. Um, incredibly excited to hear uh, Ryan is going to be a father times two here. So that's, that's uh, exciting. Just found that out a little bit ago. Um, but uh, you know, it's been a, a challenging year, but I, I do believe that, the best in people comes out in challenging times. And so um, I, I really enjoyed, um, you know, interacting with pinball and, and a lot of people I got to know better, especially in the early months uh, on the Argo staff. And, you know, now the tough part is it's hurry up and wait time uh, in the CFL, which can be frustrating, but um, I have such excitement because I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Ryan coach and to, you know, seeing pinball's vision for this culture to come together. So um, I, I like to look forward and, um, you know, but these last seven, eight, nine months, um, you know, been dealing with it as best we can. But uh, I, I like to look forward and I think good things are in front of us for this franchise. Michael, I'll ask the same question of you now. How, uh, not from a professional standpoint, but with you and Diane and the girls, how's everybody doing? Uh, I, I've actually tried to, to edit a little bit. We, we turned the C into an H. So we're not coping, we're hoping, right? We're, we're hoping for a better tomorrow and, and uh, we've had the worst of it. Uh, we have um, have a couple of family members that we've lost both in uh, Alabama and Florida uh, doing this. And, and so, so that part of it has been a challenge and, and uh, you know, um, uh, family that we uh, love and are, are passionate about that are, are no longer with us. And, and uh, uh, we're just trying to press on though. The only way they live now is live through us. And so we're, we're even trying to um, have a positive spin on that and, and, uh, and trying to have their spirit uh, live through us. And so uh, we are excited uh, about the coming season and young Ryan, yeah, is a real treat. I know you're going to ask me a few more questions, so I won't. I won't go too far uh, just yet. But uh, Ryan has been an absolute treat in so many ways, and uh, uh, to know him is the loving. Okay, we know him, we love him, and uh, congratulations on the uh, the baby news as well. Uh, Medley, how are you doing through all of this? Because this was supposed to be a really big year professionally for you. Yeah, the first pinball, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, with a guy like you and Bill is my leaders and guys I, you know, trust and believe in. It's been uh, great work with you guys, too. And I, I just want to really um, give thanks to MLSE for what they've done 
with our coaching staff through this whole pandemic. Um, but, you know, moving forward with it, it's been tough. Um, got the, the nice part is I got to spend more time with my wife and my, my son and, and do those things where I'm normally not around. So that's that's been pretty neat. Um, you know, just he'll come down the basement on working and, and walk down the stairs and interrupt me for a bit. But for the most part, I've just been trying to work away and get a head start on next year, uh, do some studies as far as college football and, um, you know, working with our staff to make sure our playbook's where it needs to be. Uh, we have all that stuff online. So we've just been trying to be – uh, do our due diligence at home and uh, the, at the same time it's kind of helped me i've been a guy that i want everybody in the office 24 7 all the time and and it gave me a different light and view that you can do it um uh, from different cities with uh, technology this these days uh bill there was a little bit of football news kind of leaked out late last week but uh, into this week as well as the logo of the argonauts has been streamlined a little bit uh have one on the lapel at this stage but maybe you can take us uh through well, why this was done and and personally what do you think of the new logo uh, i think it's great i think it's a uh you know it's a nod to the past um with the you know a little i guess modern updates um I think it's a really good looking logo. I think, um, you know, the one thing about the Argos that never will go away is the great history of this franchise. And so to bring back the boat logo, um, you know, I hope and think will be well received. Um, I remember my first year as team president, I had, uh, you know, a number of people. One guy actually came in, knocked on the door in the suite of a game. like, bring back the boat logo. And so um we do hope it's well received and i think it's a it's an iconic um you know kind of remembrance of of this franchise and what is old is new and so we're really excited about it and uh um you know at the end of the day logos are, are meant to represent and so we hope it it represents the past and the future as it's uh moving forward Mike, you've uh, played with a lot of logos on the side of your helmet or the jersey or the golf shirt, depending on what your role with the team was. How do you like this new logo? Oh, you know what? I, I, the reason I love it so much is, um, you know, we, we, we've had a lot of different logos, but when people talk about uh, that logo, that logo seems to represent uh, an era when we were at our best. And, uh, and, and so uh, the last many years, we've had a lot of conversations about remember the good old days. And the conversation that I want to have is these are the good old days. And, and so, so consistent with that, we have that logo in place that represents the good old days. And now let's turn this into the good old days. So Ryan, you haven't even had the logo on and the stuff uh, you were given last year is already vintage. So that's, <laughs> that's good with, <laughs> with the new logo. Uh, are you a logo guy? Like, are, are, are you into the colors and all that? Or is it just... I just want to put on two shades of blue, put on the, put on the headset, and let's go get them. Oh, big time. I like to look fancy. You know, I, I played at one point, and you always say you play good, you look good. Same thing on the on the sidelines. You want to look look nice. And, and you know, it's just a it's classy look, and the, the players like little things like that. So it's going to be a fresh new start for those guys. You know, I like the fact that there's, like we said, there's history behind it. Uh, a lot of our Americans coming in are going to be, you know, rookies. And so now they can kind of understand the background of the city, and what we've done and it, and it and also it's a fresh start for us it's time for us to start new and build our own tradition i always talk about legacy so i think this new boat builds uh you know along with our legacy what we're trying to develop here uh bill this was uh, a, a horrible year for football fans in this country uh having uh, the season taken away and um you know this is nothing you could train for whether it be an mls into your background or the nfl so there were obviously challenges to leading an organization through this when the end zone kept moving further and further away. How, how did you how did you deal with that this year? And, and maybe just a lesson or two that you've been able to learn along the way about uh, managing through this kind of uh, this kind of disaster. Yeah, and you're right, Mike. There is no playbook, um, and so you know part of it is just what you've experienced in business and in life, and, and some of it is personal hunch and and um you know for me early on it was a balance and even now it's a balance between how how much do you get involved or, or how much do you sit back because you know unfortunately there isn't 
a whole lot to do um, at times, right? And and that makes it very difficult. You can you can plan as as much as you want, um, but especially now as we go into next season, um, there's still a lot of um, you know. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of twists and turns uh, before we get back to football again. Um, so it's been in challenging, but but also um, an opportunity to connect um, with some of the Argo staff and coaches, uh, albeit via Zoom, but just more on a personal level, me to get to know these guys, especially in the early months. And then, you know, I kind of just let it run um, and, and, you know, I'm amazed at how much these guys continue to get together from the coaching staff and the football staff um, <laughs> going through all these mock scenarios and planning. And, and uh, um, you know, I, the one thing that I sleep well at night is if any club is going to be prepared when we hit the football field next year, it's going to be the Argos. Uh, so I have no doubt about that. Um, but it's, um, it's it, I, I think these last nine months have tested everyone. And uh, um, at the end of the day, I think the teams that best handled this situation and Ryan mentioned uh, our parent company, MLSE, how we've handled our staffing and, and uh, uh, the support we have there. I think we'll, we'll show up on the field, you know, eight, six months from now, seven months from now, eight months from now, whenever we start playing football again, um, I think it's going to show up. And so uh, I'm, uh, um, like Pinball kind of said, I'm, I'm excited to go forward. I'm, I'm looking forward. And um, I have no doubt we have we have the right people in place, um, which gives me a lot of confidence. Uh, the, the work behind the scenes that, uh, that, that the different organizational uh, arms are doing, says it was remarkable to see, especially when people were preparing for the potential of going to Winnipeg, just how many people were doing so many things to try and prepare for that. Is there one thing, Bill, when you look back now uh, and you look at your staff and you maybe think, man, I'm pretty proud of the way that we got through this, or th there were one or two things that we went through as an organization and as a group that uh, really makes me happy and, and, and let me know that we got some good people in place. You know, the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, I got a number of, of calls actually and, and, and some texts just from, um, some of the some of the guys on Ryan's staff who you know I've I've only gotten to know um, via Zoom calls and and uh, some of our staff with the Argos um, just thanking me and 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 the organization for for standing behind the team and uh, you know early on it was more I didn't care very much about our plans for football I cared about how people's families were. And, um you know what what they were experiencing because we have a staff that a number of them are in the states in the off season um so i'm very proud of that those connections and um the fact that you know we we were all in it together and we're literally the entire staff that was here in march is still here right now and uh we're all looking towards 2021 so just um what came out for me was this, there's a lot of good people uh, in this organization that, that care a lot. And it was an extremely, extremely difficult decision um, when, you know, collectively we could not go forward uh, with the league in 2020. Um, but in terms of me being proud, this group did not cry. They did not whine. They did not point fingers. Um, they understood the decision and, and literally it was like, I, I think it was Ryan and Pinball both of them were like, the very next day, 2021 started and, uh, and that's what we started looking forward to. So, um, you know, tough, tough decisions, but this is a group that, that is looking forward and I was so proud of how they turned the page on the 2020 season when that decision was made and, and looking forward to 2021. I. I still joke with Ryan and Pinball. Ryan is undefeated as a head coach and Pinball's undefeated as a GM. Oh, we got to keep it that way. Uh, and we're getting back <laughs> to the field. But Mike, there's, uh, you know, for, for folks who maybe look at this from afar and say, well, how did they keep busy uh, with all of this going on and no games? Can you take us through the, the football operations side of things and 
what you and John Murphy and, and even other people under your purview, like uh, the medical staff and the equipment staff, et cetera, the, the, the scouting staff, how you kept everybody busy and, and, and what's been going on uh, in the last eight or nine months. I'm so glad you asked. I couldn't wait to brag about my guys. Uh, phenomenal. <laughs> this, this is my, right? And, and so I, I, and Bill is, is younger than me. So I, 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 I'll, I'll say Uncle Bill because sometimes the uncle is the same age, right? So, so I got <laughs> Uncle Bill over there. And, uh, uh, and then the uh, first cousin to Hope is preparation right? And uh, my brothers, who actually are part of that, are John Murphy. I, I can't say, there are not, not superlatives to describe him, right? But if you're going <laughs> to try, he'll do it for you. Now, uh, not, not only that, um, Vince and Alex, uh, v, v nominal, like phenomenal, V nominal, and, and A train, I call them. So, so those two guys uh, just really bright young talent, uh, um, very uh, loyal as well. And, and, and these guys, I mean, grinding. We were working every day during the pandemic, right? Uh, preparing for uh, what, what was to be. Um, and and uh, so it didn't happen, that, but that just prepared us a little bit more. That got us ahead uh, for where we are now. And we are still meeting uh, on a consistency. And so we, we will have another meeting on tomorrow morning, uh, getting at it, going through going through our rosters going through every other team's roster going through uh the draft and eligible draftees from a year ago which gave us a really robust draft last year and now we're doing the same theme cycle again for this year we're um, looking at what's happening uh and scouting down south virtually for now uh hopefully we will to be a little bit more proactive as time moves on, uh, but it has been an electric time. And we've also had the opportunity uh, to meet with our ops group. Our total ops group uh, meets on a consistent basis. Uh, we were meeting every week during the pandemic. Uh, now we've uh, restricted that a little bit and kind of given people their responsibilities and roles, uh, but it has been a uh, it, one of the most complete processes that uh, I've, I've ever been through. And if we did have a season this year, I, I believe that you would have been proud of the outcome because, uh, again, the first uh, cousin to hope is preparation and we were, we were prepared. There's no doubt about that. Brian, I feel guilty having love, you follow pinball that. all the time because it's impossible to follow pinball. But I'll ask yeah, you the same question. Right one of these days, huh? I'll, I'll flip it around <laughs> next time. Uh, I'll, I'll you ask go. you about your coaching staff and the same question. Um, you know, how over the last few months have you been able to keep busy and, and prepare for now the 2021 season? Yeah, we've been going the whole time. And, and once the season got canceled, I gave our guys about two weeks off and hey get with your family you know lick your wounds a little bit but we got to get back to work so for the most part we've been going uh you know I, I don't do it every day with those guys we're usually monday wednesday friday we'll mix in the tuesday thursday and go over some things but you know i'm, ex I'm excited about our staff those guys have been loyal and we've had scheduled meetings all off season they've been willing to do it and, and dialed in and all about it and then there's times where y'all you know, down in the basement i'm drawing up some stuff and i'll be like hey I'll hit up Jerry, and Marcus or Mac and hey, what do you think about this or anybody else? And hey, let's meet tomorrow. Let's talk about it. Those guys are always open. Their schedule is always open. So they treat it just like they're here working. And I'm very happy with those guys, you know, the work ethic that they've shown and also the, the character people that they are. I think their players are going to really respect what they're about. And that's what we're trying to bring here. And that character is people that do things the right way. And that's going to be the Argo way moving forward. Pinball, you know this fan base better than basically anybody. And uh, at our last uh, football ops meeting, uh, it was pointed out to us that in terms of our fan base um, reinvesting their money, their season ticket money in the Argos and not asking for the refund, uh, the Argos at the top of the list. Uh, we've had the fewest number of people ask for their money back, uh, the fewest percentage. Like our, our, our fan base is as loyal as anyone. Uh, and it, uh, you know, from an organizational standpoint, it's been phenomenal. Does, does that surprise you at all when you hear about that kind of loyalty from the Argo fans? I have been saying it forever, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that everybody else is caught up with the news now. And, and, and we, 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 we just said there that, that they are as loyal. That's incorrect. 
they are more loyal than any fan base in the league. And, I, and I, I've said it for years. Um, they they may not be the biggest group, right? But but that's going to happen as well, I believe, at, at some point here. We are going to uh, gain some momentum in that direction. But but without question, the loyalty of our fans, uh, even when the subset of, of MLSE properties, uh, there's a great de degree of loyalty uh, in our fans. And uh, we could be more, more happy for uh, for um, the commitment that they make to us uh, and and I, I just I want to engage with them more so we're we're going to to look into opportunities to see how we can even get more connected with them and we're not gonna wait for the season we're gonna try to do that during this off season so so stay tuned because we listen we you give us energy, uh, you give us inspiration, you give us support, uh, you are everything. And so we're going to try to see if we can't get more connected to you. So uh, make sure you look out for that. Okay, coach, I'm going to bail you out. I'm not going to have you follow uh, Mike. I'm going to have Bill follow Mike this time around. And um, I'll, I'll ask you about Mike and Ryan and John Murphy will throw that in there as well. Because Bill, you've, you've got, you've been with organizations that have won TFC, Salt Lake City before that. Um, so, you know, what it takes from a managerial standpoint to win a championship. Last fall, you brought in Mike and Murph and, and then subsequently brought in Ryan. What is it about, I'll, I'll throw John into this as well. What is it about this trio that you think can deliver, you know, great cup championships down the road for this city? Well, like Pinball said, uh, Murph is indescribable. <laughs> And so we'll, we'll leave it at that. That is our inside joke. Um, but, you know, John is a guy who is literally a walking encyclopedia when it comes to um, player personnel and the CFL and, and, and football in, in the United States. And, and he can talk uh, all day long, but, man, that guy, he knows players and uh, he's, he's a deal maker and, you know, he, he is in the weeds when it comes to the player personnel start, and I think that is um, a great asset um, of ours to have him in that role. Um, you know, pinball, I still remember, and he'll remember too, when I, when I went out, to, I asked him to uh, join me for um, a cup of coffee. I, I think we had, I think maybe I had a beer, or he had a cup of coffee, and... Um, I asked him how come uh, he hadn't really truly been involved with the Argos in, in a football operations capacity for since he retired from coaching. And uh, he, he, he laughingly said no one had asked him. And then I asked him and he said no. <laughs> and so it took some convincing, but I had no doubt that, you know, the more I, I, I you know, was introduced to pinball through a mutual friend, Council Grimes, and just the more I was around him and got to know him, um, he, he has such great energy, but he's an extremely knowledgeable football guy. And then to have this leadership, the great leadership qualities that he has and the type of culture he wants to build um, combined with his knowledge of football, not only playing on the field, but also as a coach, which is, I think, going to be incredibly important as a mentor to Ryan. Um, and just his general knowledge of the CFL, I was like, you know, if we are ever going to um, go to where I want to go, which is be a championship caliber team, you need a, a, a championship caliber leader like like Pinball. And then, you know, Ryan, I did not know much about. He really was um, Pinball and John's recommendation. Um, uh, he did have the uh, approval and the recommendation, um, you know, from, from Calgary and John Huffnagel, who – as I've gotten to know him uh, over these last couple of years is as well respected as any football guy um, I've ever come across. And uh, now that I've gotten to know Ryan a bit better and just, you know, pinball really working with him, uh, he's a workhorse and is dedicated to this team. Uh, he moved here with his, with his wife um, and, and uh, um, his boy and, and, and he now has a growing family. Um, and football is what he's all about, you know, pinball jokes. When he, when he asked Ryan, you know, what, what are your interests? And uh, Ryan said football. And he said, no, I mean, outside of football. He said, well, no, I'm, it's football. And so he is a, a football guy through and through, and he's a class act, um, high character. 
and and that's what you know I, I like to surround myself with people that are competitive um, but people that are good people too and so um, I'm incredibly excited um, about this because um, the one thing we all agree on is we have to improve um, with the Argos on the field it has not been good enough the last few years and um, you know, when we did make this change, it was about, it wasn't about, um, you know, short term. This was about let's build a winning franchise for, you know, perpetuity and how can we do that? And, you know, I remember Pinball describing Ryan was Ryan is the next big thing. Um, let's make sure, you know, and, and uh, you know, he wasn't a head coach yet, right? He didn't have that experience. But, you know, the thing was, he is going to be a head coach. Let's get him now. Um, and so incredibly excited to, to see Ryan in this coaching capacity um, uh, as a head coach. And so um, I'm, 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 I'm gigged up. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited about it. But those are the reasons for me, if you want to build, you know, on-field results in all sports to me are, are the product of, of a great culture. You need great talent, both on and off the field, um, and you have to make smart decisions. And so I think the talent part in the front office is there. I think the culture that pinball has been building is now emerging. Um, and, and I think we've made some smart decisions and I trust that John and pinball and Ryan are gonna make really good decisions on the football side. So, um, and then I think the on-field results will come. Ryan, let me let me ask you about sort of this uh, this waiting period for you, and you kind of talked about what you were doing. But how did, this is a new challenge for any coach having to go through this prolonged period. How are you keeping it fresh for your coaching staff? I mean, there's only there's only so much video you can watch because it's not even new video; it's the same game film from last year. Yeah, we've been you know uh, kind of careful about how much film we watch. I don't want to burn guys out at this stage, you know. So right now we're focused on the NFL games. Uh, you know, uh, Bill got us uh, what they call his pro football focus, so I can sort any play for the Chiefs, any screens, any RPOs, which is like play action, run pass options. So I've been studying that and just, hey, can this scheme work in our league? Uh, does it fit in our playbook? So those have been some of the things I've had our guys do. But right now they're studying college football. I gave each each coach uh, a conference down south and for them to look at and watch all those games. And if we find some players from it, great. Uh, we find some schemes from it, uh, absolutely. So when we get together in February, we're going to uh, present all those schemes and anything we can add you know, moving forward, it's going to help us out. And it, it keeps your mind fresh. And the guy's been willing to do it. I'm actually doing the Pac-12 and Mountain West myself. So uh, it's been a fun little uh, study. And I think the guys have saved all their video stuff so we can show it to our players if we decide to implement it in training camp so they'll have our Argo stuff. And then we can have some things that we stole from some other you know, teams in uh, you know, colleges and stuff that we feel uh, seems fit for us. So we're keeping busy, uh, keeping the minds fresh, but I'm, I, we're not just doing work just to do it. I don't want to uh, burn us out. So we'll be doing the CFL stuff like we normally do in February or March, but right now we're focused on uh, USA football. Mike, you brought in some uh, players in the off season and when you were upgrading the Canadian talent, you went heavy on players from the GTA, uh, bringing a lot of guys home. Uh, was was that intentional going in or did it just kind of happen to work out that way? For, for us, uh, as, as we were, were going in, we, we did have that plan. That, that was intentional. Uh, we wanted to find guys that were close to their home uh, because, you know, a lot of times you, you, you put, put really important pieces, you make good picks, and then they leave as free agents to uh, get back close to their home. And, and you can't blame anyone for wanting, wanting to be close to their home. And we say, well, we got some of the best players uh, that are from here, and so why not invest? Vest there, and so that was uh, a, an exercise that we went through uh, early. Uh, one of the things that we did er really early on is gave everybody a voice. So we got into these um, round circles, and we we let everybody speak, let everybody participate, uh, let everybody have a voice, everybody have the floor, and um, and I, Murph was really the one who who led us. Uh, this area. Uh, so John Murphy, uh, we affectionately call Murph, and, and uh, he was the one I think was the leadership in that area. We had kind of talked about it in a couple of different ways, but Murph, I think, was the one who really sold it and uh, and really bought us in that direction. And uh, so we um, 
it, you know, I, I, t I say all the time, if, if you're the smartest guy in the room, it's your own fault, right? And, and sometimes we'll make a thing like that and we'll say it, but, but we, we don't uh, allow all those voices to speak. And so we try to make sure in our room that, that uh, everybody has a voice and has that opportunity. And, and uh, uh, John Murphy was the author of that one. And, um, and uh, we're just, yeah, we're, we're really excited to what, um, uh, what, what, what is to come, if you will. I, I do wanna say, uh, if I could though, Ryan in particular has has been this super special surprise because we knew he knew football. We knew he would be a good coach, right? Um, we knew he made good decisions on the field, all of those kinds of things. What we didn't know is what kind of leader he would be. And um, to see the way guys rally around him Right, and that's really because he he rallies for them. Uh, his passion when he was talking about some of the guys that uh, we that are on the staff now and why he would want them, uh, and, and so as he petitioned for them and talked so passionately about them and what he thought that they could bring to the team, and then he he has all these ideas around bringing guys together. You know, going to the the cottage and going fishing and uh, having these different trips. All these ideas ideas around them as people bringing them together and then he uh as it relates to football um you know he he's nine days a week so so uh just just love the game and so passionate about it and it comes through so sincerely to his guys and there's an energy uh that th those guys have in the room and he he picked guys i think that mirror his passion for the game they are different in uh who they are and the way they present uh so it's a, a very eclectic group in that way uh, but they all have in common being passionate about the game. And, and uh, so, so that influence is always important uh, as, as we get uh, our information from the coaches because it really, they, they inform us on where we should be going and the kind of players uh, that we, we should have on our team. And so, I mean, if, if the coach is going to coach the players, you want to make sure that he has the kind of players that he wants uh, and, and, and has designed his systems to accomplish. Uh, certainly, we um, will accommodate systems to really good players, right? Uh, but but you do have to have a concept, an idea of what you're trying to do. And uh, there's a degree of clarity that I haven't seen in that area, uh, even when I was a coach, um, uh, that I have to admit uh, in, in this group. And, and that's that we're really proud uh, to say, but we'll be more proud for you to see. Let me follow up on that, Mike, because as Bill alluded to, the last couple of years on the field, the record hasn't been acceptable. And 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 there was a major uh, addition of players, Americans, Canadians, in the offseason. You haven't got a chance to see a lot of these Americans, American newcomers on the field, um, but there's always that temptation to add more players. And, you know, there are some very intriguing names on the negotiation list right now. Uh, there's a hiring freeze right now in terms of players, but when, when you're allowed to bring in more players, Mike, do you expect to be active or is there more of a temptation to see, okay, we've already upgraded, let's see what we have before we bring in even more? Well, enough is never enough in this game. So you always have to challenge yourself uh, to try to get better. Um, that, that's what we're consistently endeavoring to do. It's a never ending process. And, and much of that will be uh, communicated by Ryan and his team. Uh, we, we already um, have thought on how we might be able to uh, improve our roster. Uh, and and uh, so we, when, when the time comes, um, we, we're not there. Right. Um, you know, with the successful offseason last year, we feel like we are not there. And, and so, um, no, we, we are we, we are very active, if in mind only, and hopefully a roster eventually. Very nice. Uh, I want to go once around the horn on this one, because one of, when, when it was announced we were doing this, we got a lot of requests from fans for one specific type of question. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to bring this sort of and encompass it in, in one giant question for everybody. And it's about needs and filling holes and plugging the some of the deficiencies that the organization has had uh, over the last 
few years. Um, Bill, what's, what's the biggest need right now in your department or uh, a hole that you'd like to see plugged up uh, at this stage uh, moving forward so we can continue to improve as an organization? Um, you know, it's an excellent question. You know, the I feel that we are a, a very lean, lean and mean, um, kind of a, an efficient group right now. Um, I think we, uh, I think we have quality people uh, in the front office and, and, and on Ryan's coaching staff. Um, in terms of needs, you know, Pinball and I have talked a lot about uh, a dedicated practice field um, that would be uh, dedicated to the Argonauts. And, and what's crazy is pre-pandemic, we were actually closing in on one and uh, that was put on hold a bit right now. And so we'll re-engage on that end. But that's, you know, if, if it was any one thing that we need, it would be our own practice facility that, that our guys can call home. That's the the biggest, um, the biggest need, I would say, for this organization. Well, it makes Ryan happy, obviously. Coach, what else do you have in terms of, of uh, something on your, your want list? Oh, uh, that, that's, that's one of the things that I would really appreciate. Uh, it'd be nice to you know, have our facility that we can call our own and not have to travel too far. But I, I don't mind our situation right now as it is. You know, we're at in Toronto. Uh, the facility's great right here on the water. Uh, it's downtown. The players can live downtown and, and you know, get here easily. So it, it, it's improving here for sure. But, you know, for us right now, I think we need to get a little bit more depth on the offensive line. I'll stick to football because that's kind of what my job is to do anyways. Those guys handle that other stuff. But we got to get a little bit better on the front seven, guys, uh, on the O-line and, and the defensive line. So if we can get get that going, I think we'll be a, a dynamic team. I think we changed the defensive backs last year. We got longer, uh, got more athletic. And, but the thing is, if you want to have turnovers, you got to have great defense alignment. So we got to improve that a little bit, and we got to make sure our quarterback can stay upright. So those are really the, the the two holes that I can see right now. But we have guys that we believe in going into camp this year that can fill those things. But I guess it'd be more unknown at those positions more than we, we need to get better players in here than that. I oh, love you here to hear you talk football. That's awesome. Michael, how about you? What's your, what's on your wish list? Uh, my, my wish list is um, – around our fans. I, uh, I want us to be closer to have a more intimate relationship uh, with our fans uh, in terms of using the different mediums we have uh, to engage them more so that they get a chance to know who our players are. So when you see that jersey number, uh, it represents more than, uh, oh, I see it's a uh, 60, so it must be an offensive lineman, or I see it's uh, 20, so it's a, a running back or, or, or maybe a defensive back. Uh, so so a, as we begin to associate um, uh, numbers to people, right, we want those people to be uh, very present in, in our fans' minds and being able to, to have that communication. So that that is what my hope is, is that, um, one, we connect with our fans more, and two, right, we, we're, we're able uh, to intersect with a larger cross-section of fans uh, who will really get to understand uh, what um, it's like to uh, be an Argonaut and a part of this, this Argos family. Uh, in closing, gentlemen, I'd like to give each one of you the floor for, for a few seconds or however long you need to maybe address the fans and just talk to them about uh, anything that's uh, that's on your mind, sort of a closing statement from each of you, of, as it were. Bill, would, would you like to say anything? 2020 can't get over with soon enough. We're, we're, <laughs> we're looking forward to 2021, and uh, I just can't wait to uh, see Ryan on the sidelines and uh, – you know, this, this this team playing football games again, um, you know, I've become a, a big fan um, the last two years. And if I could just sit back and enjoy this game while Ryan and, and, and Pinball are doing their stuff to help us win, I, I will not be, it will not be, uh, I could not have better moments than that because um, if I can have my soccer team and the football team both winning, you're going to, you're going to have a happy Bill Manning um, and, and our fans, obviously that's what they want. Coach, how about you? What do you have for us? Yeah, just like you know, you guys uh, mentioned earlier, you know how loyal to our you know our season ticket holders, you know what they they did, why as far as rolling their tickets over, not ask for a refund. 
that goes a long ways. And we know we have a good loyal fan base, but we got to build on that. So, you know, that starts with us. We got to put a better product on the field. We got to make them want to come watch exciting football. Uh, I think if we do that part. We'll, you build it, they will come. You know, kind of feel the dreams, the analogy there. But um, I think, you know, they're, they're there. And I think if you guys could just kind of grab your neighbors and uh, tell them how excited you are and how enthusiastic you are as an Argos fan, we can get some more people in here. Um, you know, me and my wife were walking down by the lake just the other day. Um, I came by the office just checking out the stadium. I, I think it's a beautiful venue. And if we can get 20 plus in that thing every week, it's going to be a, a great advantage for us to, you know, have that home field advantage as far as, you know, crowd noise and those things. And I want to get this boat rocking, man. I want to get it going. So we'll do our part. Uh, if you guys could do your part to keep coming and, and spread the word, that's a, it's a new era. It's a new time around here. Excuse me while I write down the term rock the boat. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, finally, number 31, take us home. <laughs> all right, all right. I will try to be concise. You know I have trouble with that. So I will try to say it very <laughs> simply. As a player, you were the main course. You were the entree. You fed me, right? As a coach, you were the cake. And now as the GM, you're the icing on the cake, right? You have made this uh, an absolute adventure from day one. And I, I thank you for all of your support in the way you have handled us as an organization. And from here, we wanna let you know that our goal is to please you, right? Um, for me, I, I, I've been, uh, married for 28 years. Uh, well, Diane and I have been together for 36 years and and, uh, and I live to serve her. And, and in a similar way, uh, there's an appreciation from a, st a fan standpoint. You have been there with uh, us and been bes beside us for so long and, and we really want you to know and understand uh, by what we show and what we illustrate to you that you are infinitely important to us and we could not appreciate you more. So fans, big virtual hug. We love you. Ah! And you're the best in the league. <laughs> That's awesome. Gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for uh, for taking some time today to uh, to talk to our fan base and keep them up to speed with what's going on. Uh, there's a lot to check out uh, on Argonauts.ca and all of our social media platforms. Uh, it's been a very busy week. It's going to be a very fun week despite not having anything on the field. And if I can have something on my wish list for next year, I want to do this again, but I want to do it with all of us in the same room as opposed to doing it over Zoom. So uh, happy Grey Cup week, everybody. Uh, sociable, as it were, for a great cup week. And uh, thank you so much for joining us for the Argonaut State of the Union.